50 MTA employees have actually died from the coronavirus and many have tested positive. The Transport Workers Union International President John Samuelson remarked, we will not sit back and let transit workers be treated like cannon fodder in this war against coronavirus. The two biggest transit unions in the country have collectively made a vow to defend transit workers. I do believe that the fight back that the union put on has actually saved lives. with John Samuelson. John is the international president of the Transport Workers Union. What more do you want to see happen uh, to keep these workers safe? As of right now, the governor of New Jersey has given instructions that nobody's allowed to ride on a public or private transit system without a face covering. That mandate needs to happen in New, in New York and every other city across the country. CODA is taking several measures to keep both passengers and their drivers safe. Starting on Wednesday, they're asking everyone to wear a face mask. The FTA needs to intercede. They need to establish uniform procedures that protect transit workers, protect transit riders, just like there was a federal economic stimulus response, there has to be a federal health and safety response. Six hundred Southwest workers have tested positive for COVID-19. It's really hard for our flight attendants to be out there right now without the proper equipment to protect them. Somebody could be on that plane with COVID-19. They could blow their nose in a tissue, use rubber gloves, take the stuff off, leave it in a seat, and then there'd be an expectation that our flight attendant would have to deal with that mess. No employer should have the right to put a worker in harm's way. There's social distancing rules on airplanes now that didn't exist before the TW demanded it. We've talked before about the benefits of being financially prepared, especially coming into this crisis. It is serving us very, very well, securing another $2.3 billion in additional cash. We provided a cash balance mid-March of roughly $6 billion, puts us in a much better spot from a cash perspective. The grants will also help uh, provide much needed cash flow to cover a significant portion of our uh, salaries, wages, and benefits. And as always, that is my number one priority. People are dying, and when people are dying, the way you win is by fighting back. In New York in particular, there's not a lot of flights going in and out of JFK and LaGuardia. Workers that aren't necessarily doing something extremely important in this fight back against COVID-19 should be at home. There was a lot of pressure from the local on upward and the international on down. And of course, because it was so logical, it took American Airlines just a little bit longer to get there. We're happy with the outcome and we succeeded. My heart goes out to workers that are not in the union right now across the United States, particularly frontline transportation workers who are being exposed recklessly, needlessly, indifferently. I was on a conference call yesterday with the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. There were six or seven union leaders on there. At least half the union leaders on there had 95% of their memberships laid off. We have experienced some layoffs and furloughs, particularly in the school bus industry. We put on a massive political fight and legislative fight with the last stimulus bill to ensure that there would be a really advanced economic package for those who were laid off, not only in terms of state on insurance, but the 600 bucks a week from the federal government on top of the insurance. How ridiculous is it that industries are laying off workers and those workers are going to lose their health benefits in the middle of the most serious public health crisis in the history of the United States of America. These industrial bailouts, in my mind, are extremely important because it keeps families on health benefits. You know, transport workers have a heart for society. There's no doubt about it. We have local unions that are participating in the broader fight back, doing whatever they can to supply PPE. We're proud that they're doing that, but it shouldn't come to that. The federal government should have stepped in. They should have established protocols. We have a society that has not invested in the American people. People are dying and 
When people are dying, the way you win is by fighting back.